Hello, and welcome to Footnotes. As per the usual, I'm here to recap the most ravishing language and ideas from the last week of Wired. First up today, we're going off the rails. Wired Science posted a live feed of two comets passing each other, with reporter Adam Mann referring to them as celestial drifters. So drifters are different from vagrants in that they may be looking for work, whereas vagrants resort to begging. Comets in this sense are drifting with the full-time job of looking awesome and tearing shit up. Ever since we shunned our nomadic tendencies and settled in cities, there have been wandering holdouts, but it was the American hobo that truly romanticized the freedom in drifting. This hobo is a drifter who is willing to work as opposed to a tramp, who is not. And the hobo's classic symbol is the bindle, with relatively rich hobos sporting the exceedingly rare triple-decker bindle. Though the term hobo did not emerge until the turn of the 20th century, these drifters began riding freight trains extensively after the Civil War. They were looking for work, or running away from the women they insincerely promised to marry if they survived the war and they were ostracized from the get-go. Many train-riding hobos were political radicals, and while they worked for an honest wage, some also stole. And they were constantly hounded by railroad guards, known as bulls, who unfortunately never fell for the red blanket trick. Hoboing peaked in the Great Depression and continues to this day. There's even a hobo convention in Brit, Iowa. Come for the ugly shoe contest, stay for the swag. Next up, double your pleasure, double your death. That's the statement of the word doppelganger in a piece on video game guru Peter Molyneux in the November issue of the magazine. In folklore, your doppelganger is a paranormal exact copy of yourself. It comes from the German, meaning double walker or goer. Traditionally, seeing your doppelganger is a bad omen, typically of impending death, sometimes at the hands of Chuck Norris. I said stay down. Many ostensibly sane historical figures have reported seeing their doppelgangers. For instance, Abe Lincoln once said that he looked in the mirror and saw another face next to his reflection, complete with sick nasty hat. And it's no wonder the connotation with doppelgangers is a bad one. Seeing somebody who looks even a little bit like us elicits a sort of discomfort because it challenges our sense of identity. Except if you're under 21 and have an older cousin who looks like you, then it's just convenient. The doppelganger horror was captured masterfully in the classic Twilight Zone episode, Mirror Image in which a woman sees her doppelganger and has an existential breakdown in a bus station, which is where I prefer to experience my emotional collapse. She suggests that her doppelganger is from another plane of existence and has come to replace her. But if the laws of quantum physics are correct, there could be an infinite number of alternate universes with an infinite number of versions of you slightly different from each other. I just hope the one that comes to replace me has bigger muscles, and a beard, and a triple bindle. <laughs>